Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's the spiritual light of life, eternal life. All right, this is part, I'm not sure, I think it's six of the uh, Doctrine series. Take out your King James Bible. We're going to do Mark chapter 6. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to go to John. There's a lot of material here. Uh, the reason I'm going to John, or I'm sorry, Mark 6, is I'm going to show you some information about uh, the family of that uh, Jesus was born into. Or those that were born into the family that Jesus was born into, I guess you could say, since he was the firstborn. And the law of the firstborn, believe it or not, was supposed to receive a blessing of the Lord. He was supposed to receive a, uh, well, the, the male firstborn was supposed to receive a double blessing because it was his responsibility to take care of the parents when they got older so they would he would get a double uh double inheritance so if you had four kids uh you would divide it up into five parts and he would get two-fifths of that that's how that worked or if he, there was two sons uh the oldest son the firstborn would get uh two-thirds because it was his responsibility to take care of the family, the, the parents. And there was a um, another verse where the Bible says that the um, all that open the womb belong to the Lord. I'm going to have to take a look to find that. Uh, all right, Exodus 13, 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Whatsoever openeth the womb among the Whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Luke 2, 30, uh, Luke 2, 23. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. All right, the double portion is found in Deuteronomy 21, 17. Um, I don't want anybody saying, oh, Bob's pulling verses out of context. But he that shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength, the right of the firstborn is his. Now, who were the firstborn? Who was the first? Who was first, the first firstborn? Cain. There's some of you that know who Cain's real daddy was. Yeah. And uh, Esau. Esau was another one of the first, uh, the first firstborn. You know? <laughs> yeah. Two, two winners in the, uh, in the family tree, right? All right, so let's go back to Mark chapter 6. And by the way, Jesus was the firstborn of Mary. Mark chapter 6, King James Bible. Verse 1. And he, Jesus, went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come... He began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he has given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Yeah, where, where is he getting all this information and this wisdom and all these miracles? Where, where is this coming from? But in verse 3, they say, 
Is not this the carpenter? Oh, yeah, this guy, he's just a carpenter. He didn't go to Dallas Theological Cemetery. Oh, no, he didn't get, you know, he didn't get a doctorate degree. This guy works with wood. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? You ever heard of the book of James? Yeah, that, that, that James. And uh, when he says of Judah, I believe... I believe he was the author of the book of Jude. So two of the sons of Mary who were, yeah, they were, um, they became, uh, I, I think James was some kind of a, a bishop in the church. And I'm not sure about Jude, although Jude did write an epistle. A letter so can you imagine growing up your whole life with Jesus I mean really can you imagine that you know and Mary was uh, spoken to by an angel Gabriel I think it was Gabriel and even told to call his name Jesus and Joseph was told in a dream to uh, take Mary for a wife. You know, you gotta kind of wonder when you're uh, you're engaged, but you haven't touched your uh, fiance, and then she gets pregnant. You know, there's some things that are gonna be going through your head. And I wonder who she was cheating on me with. You know. And then that angel told him to go down to, um, was it the angel or the Lord? I forget. Uh, to go down to Egypt because Herod, the Herod family was going to try to kill him. Yeah. So, you know, think about it. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? Jesus had at least two sisters, and they were offended at him. You know, this is why in the military, they do not let the officers uh, fraternize or, you know, hang around with the enlisted people. Because when the officer barks an order, you don't want people to second guess the order or, you know, start questioning them and stirring up strife because we all have our faults i mean and uh i am uh <laughs> i've got an extra long list trust me i got an extra long list of faults but uh you know that's why uh in the military they don't want you know they have an officers club and then they have the in uh, the NCO, the non-commissioned officers club, the enlisted people, you know, the sergeants, privates, and what have you. So, so here it is. Jesus is performing miracles. And what do they say? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among, and among his own kin and in his own house. Everywhere else a prophet has honor, but not in his own country, not among his own family. Nope. And Jesus is a prophet. He's also a priest, a coming king, the high priest. Yeah, 
prophet, priest, and king. Verse 5. And he could do there no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he, Jesus, marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around the villages teaching. You know, that's sad. He wouldn't do miracles because of their unbelief. Now, if you uh, are interested, you can look at the book of James and the book of Jude. Like I say, they became, well, at least James became like a bishop. I'm not sure about Jude. I'd have to look it up, but you get the general idea, you know. I mean, they they grew up with Jesus, but after supposedly after he rose from the dead, um, they came to believe he was the Christ. And like I mentioned, uh, an angel, I think Gabriel, came to Mary. I think it was, well, it, let's just say an angel. I'm not sure which one. Could have been Gabriel. Came to Mary and told him to name him Jesus. So every time you hear Yeshua, you know that they're denying what the angel said. At least in my, my King James Bible. Which is... All right with me because I know Jesus is not Yeshua. I know that. So they don't. Well, they that they they probably do know. They just want us to. Uh, they want to confuse the issue. John chapter seven. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Now, Galilee was part of the northern kingdom of Israel, as opposed to the southern kingdom of Judah, whose capital was Jerusalem. The northern capital of Israel at the time of Solomon's grandson or son, might have been son and grandson, I'm not sure. Uh, definitely the son. I'm not sure about the grandson, but the uh, the northern Israel's capital was Samaria. That's why they were calling Jesus, uh, you're crazy and you're a Samarian, Samaritan. Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced northern Israel. Yeah. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, northern Israel, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good reason to hang out in Galilee, huh? Verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren, I guess it's his brothers, you know, Jude and James and, yeah. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doest anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. You see, his own family is giving him a hard time. They didn't believe him. You know? Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify it, that the works thereof are evil. That's one of the things that the doctrines of Jesus Jesus testifies that the world is evil. Keep that in mind. 
We're going to cover the doctrines of Christ, probably, God willing, the last, uh, maybe the last uh, part of the series. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet come. When he had said these, thing, uh, these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. See, the family, the family's going to the feast, but Jesus is not going with them because, you know, the you know who's want to kill him. So they're probably asking the brother, his brothers, and you know Mary or Joseph or whoever's there, hey. Uh, Where's Jesus? We've been looking for him. We don't see him anywhere. Where is he? Uh, he decided not to come with us. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Do you know where he's at? We want to pay him a visit. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jesus went secretly because his time was not yet. He knew they wanted to kill him. It's not yet time. It's not yet. It's coming, but it's not yet. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the... Guess who? Yeah. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How does this guy teach all this stuff? But he didn't go to Dallas Theological Cemetery. He didn't go to Bible College. He's a carpenter. He knows about saws and drills and, you know... How, how does he know all this stuff? Where does this stuff come from? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. And who sent him? Well, not Joseph, not Mary, God the Father. If any man will do his will, the Father's will, if the Father has a will and wants us to do things, maybe we should find out what they are and do them. You know, not a bad, not a bad idea, huh? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Yeah, Moses gave you guys the law, but none of you keep it. Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Who goes, who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave you unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers, and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. Yeah, they're doing work on the Sabbath day. Why? Because when a Child was, a male child was born, they had to be circumcised on the eighth day. So if they were born eight days before Sabbath, guess what? They had to be circumcised on the Sabbath, per the law of Moses. So the, the priests were working on the Sabbath day. Think about it. Verse 23. 
And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision that the law of Moses should not be mo broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Yeah, you're going to be mad at me because I healed somebody on the Sabbath day? Really? Bunch of hypocrites. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them at Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Do you know in some of the modern Bible versions it says, Do the rulers know that this is not the Christ? Yeah. Yeah, modern Bibles. Howbeit we know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then Jesus cried in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Yeah. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. And they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? Well, guess what, people? Uh, the Antichrist, well, actually the false prophet, uh, that leads the way for the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast of Revelation. The false prophet's going to do miracles too. Same miracles that Elijah does. And I got an hour and 40 minute video on Elijah. And towards the end, I cover where uh, the false prophet's going to mimic some of the same miracles that Elijah did like bringing fire down from the sky and destroying, burning up those enemies that oppose him. You know, it's pretty hard to fight an enemy when fire comes from the sky and burns you up, you know? But that's what's going to happen to uh, those that oppose the man of sin when the false prophet comes there. I don't believe that's going to be include Christians. I don't believe so, but... I don't know. When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Did you know the temple had their own police force, their own military? Yeah. These were not Roman soldiers. No, they weren't. The uh, You think the uh, Jews would want uncircumcised Roman Gentile soldiers inside their temple polluting it? No. No, they wouldn't. They had their own police force. So the Pharisees sent and the chief priests sent officers to take him. They wanted to arrest Jesus. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. For where I am thither, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? That word Gentile just means nations. What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Yeah, when Jesus goes to be with the Father in heaven, 
you guys ain't going to follow along. You ain't coming. Uh-uh. You're going to the other. You're going in the other direction. I'm going up. You guys are going down. Literally. Hell is beneath and heaven is above. <laughs> I had a pastor actually look that up. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I did a Bible study on living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So the living water is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Verse 40. Many of the people thereof, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? Well, guess what? Jesus was born in Bethlehem, remember? And Herod tried to kill all the children. He probably got most of them. Probably got almost all of them. 43. So there was a division among the people because of him. That's right. If you follow Christ, there's going to be division. All these people are talking about unity, a unity of the faiths and a unity of the people. They're devils. They're devils. Christ caught, taught division. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? You know, the, the chief priests and the Pharisees are asking the, the police, the military, whatever, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Nobody in the history of the world has ever spoken words like this guy. Then answered them the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus, remember, he came to Jesus by night. Remember? Jesus told him, you must be born again. Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear, hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Now remember, he was at the feast, and he said, my time is not yet. So let's go to John chapter 18. This is the arrest of Jesus in the garden. Now it's getting ready to be, pa well, Passover. Now his time has come. Let's see. So John 18. Verse 1, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered in his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, 
uh, not Judas's brother, uh, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? You know, here's this group of men with lanterns, torches, and, and weapons. You know, Jesus walks up to him and says, Who are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Think about that. You're with a group of guys. You've been told by the you-know-whos to arrest Jesus. And all of you fall down backwards to the ground when Jesus says, I am he. Wow. Uh, I think I'd be a little... I don't know. I'd have some... That would evoke invoke a strong emotional response, if you ask me. Verse 7. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Old Peter, boy, he's he's ready to fight for the Lord. He's swinging at the guy's head, and he missed, but he gets the guy's ear. Oh, yeah. All right, so <laughs> Peter uh, swings a sword trying to cut this guy's head off, but instead gets his ear. But guess what? In Luke chapter 22, verses 50 and 51, And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Uh, yeah. Somebody swung a sword and cut your ear off and it's laying on the ground. And can you imagine the blood and stuff spewing all over the place. Jesus touched him and heals him. And they had just fallen out backwards. I think I'd be, you know, mm, I, I don't know. I'd be, uh, I'd be kind of, the, the, I, I, the, that would invoke a strong, a strong response to me. What can I tell you? Verse 10. John 18.10 Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. He didn't say throw it away. No, he says put, it, put the sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews, not the Romans, took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he that gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Oh, yeah. 
All right, uh, let's see, 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? And he said, I am not. Hey, uh, 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 don't you know Jesus? Aren't you one of his uh, followers? Uh, no way, girl. Uh-uh. No, I don't. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. And the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Warming yourself with the devil's fire. Oh, that's that's pretty good, right? Verse 19. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. All right, Jesus, tell us about your doctrine. We want to learn about what 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 are, what are you what are you teaching people? What are you believing? Jesus answered him. I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. Compare this, what Jesus said, you know, he's teaching out everything openly. Compare that to the Masonic Lodge, which teaches everything in secret. Matter of fact, the Masonic Lodge uh, gives you a blood oath that if you reveal the secrets of the Lodge, that your tongue be ripped out by the roots and that your throat be cut. How do I know this? Well, I was never a member of the Lodge, but I've read books uh, printed by the Lodge, and I've read books by people who came out of the Lodge, and they all teach the same thing. And why is it a secret society? Why is that? Jesus taught everything openly. Sometimes he had to hide himself to keep from being killed by, well, you know who. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I, what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? I guess he didn't like the answer. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why, smouted, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, saith Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Yeah. Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. And uh, Peter remembered when Jesus told him that before the cock crew, he'd deny him thrice. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. Yeah, they take Jesus to the judgment hall. You know, it's like the courtroom. 
but they don't want to go in because they don't want to defile themselves. But they have no problem uh, uh, with false accusations and lies and want to have him killed. But they don't want to touch that Roman judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. But that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he was not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. A malefactor, somebody of bad news bears, troublemaker, a criminal. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Uh, yeah, you know, because you're under Roman occupation. And you're not allowed, you're not allowed to use your, uh, the old law. You're under Roman law now, buddy boy. It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That's why we're bringing him here. We're going to have you do our dirty work for us. Ha ha ha. All right, so 31, then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Hmm. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 real quick, verse 1. Um, you know, here it is, the uh, you-know-whos think they're getting rid of Jesus. And, uh, you know, oh, we're getting rid of this guy. You know, he's stirring up trouble. He's uh, whipping our people in the temple and overthrew the tables. And, uh, you know, all the people are following him. And they're not coming to the temple and tithing like we want them to. He's cutting into our business here. We got to get rid of this guy. He's trouble. Let me let you in a little secret. I've mentioned it a number of times, but I'll guarantee you Pilate had sent spies to follow Jesus. He had to have. You know, you look at any large group and uh, they always send spies to keep an eye on uh, groups. I mean, the U.S. government does it all the time. You know, when they have trials for uh, certain types of uh, groups, uh, you'll find out that uh, the FBI or whoever had uh, planted an informant among them, you know, pretending to be one of them. And then they turn up at the court and uh, give testimony. You think things were any different a couple thousand years ago? You know, they're, I'll guarantee you, Pilate had people following Jesus around. I mean, when you got 5,000 people following Jesus around, you want to make sure that they're not a threat and there's, you know, going to incite riots against, you know, here it is, you're, you're in charge of this area. Last thing you want to do is have riots and show the Roman government that you're a weak ruler. So... 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not yet the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of the world, of this world, that come to naught, come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. What, what, wait a minute. D didn't Jesus always speak in parables? Off, well, not always, but oftentimes speak in parables to hide things from those that were not worthy? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Do you know that Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Before the Lord even created the world and Adam and Eve, Jesus was already set to die for our sins. You tell me, that's, that's not some great planning right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, people just don't get it. It does that as an example for us to live by. I mean, I, I can hardly wrap my head around this stuff. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, if the evil human rulers or the fallen angels, if they would have known God's plan, they never would have crucified Christ. They never would have done it. They didn't get it. They thought they were going to win by getting rid of Christ and killing him. Instead, they sealed their own doom. Think about that. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You know, Jesus said, My Father's house are many mansions. Mansions. Uh, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not an apartment building. It's mansions. Unless you get a modern Bible, then it probably does say apartments, but yeah. No, it's not an apartment building. You know, like a walk-in closet. No, 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 no. Mansions. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Hmm. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, you know, the human man without the spirit of God, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You know, unless the Lord draws you, you can't hear the words of the Lord. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. You know, you talk to people and tell them about Christ crucified it's foolishness to them. For they are foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually 
discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? You think uh, we're going to be the teachers to the God the Father? You know, the guy, the, the, the Godhead that created the heaven and the earth? You think we're going to teach him anything? Uh, not me. But we have the mind of Christ. All right, let's go back to John. And let's see what... Uh, what uh, Pilate has to say. Pilate gets a bad rap, if you ask me. He gets accused of things he didn't do. And uh, I would love to see him and his wife in the kingdom. I would love that. Hope that I'm worthy to make it into the kingdom. If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him unto, unto, unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Hmm. Where'd you come up with this idea? Did you think this on your own, or did others tell you this? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Wow. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Nope, this is not my kingdom. Mine's coming, but, this, uh, but not yet. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But, uh, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Were ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Oh yeah. We don't want the Lamb of God. We want a robber. That's who we want. Yeah. Ah, we may as well keep reading. I mean, I've covered this material before, but, you know, the doctrine of Christ, it's coming. John 19, verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. You know, that's a whipping. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Why a purple robe? A robe of the color purple is a sign of royalty. Do you know that in Europe, uh, there were laws on the books in certain countries that a peasant was not allowed to wear the color purple? Only royalty was allowed to wear purple. All right, so they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. They smacked him around, right? 
Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Why would Pilate say that? Now remember, in Matthew 22, I know we've mentioned this, I, I covered this before, but I'm bringing it up again. Verse 15, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. They're going to try to use his words against him to have him put to death by the Romans. Verse 16, And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, you know, the friends of Herod, friends and family, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute, or taxes? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar, or not? Hmm... But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Hypocrites, that's a word Jesus said a lot, speaking to the you-know-whos. So he says, Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? Whose picture is on this penny? Well, Caesar, the Roman ruler. And what is the superscription? That's uh, the, the, the Latin alphabet, the Latin words. Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You know, you're under Roman occupation for a reason. Because God is punishing you. You're getting a whipping. Think about the New World, uh, you know, the, the order of things. Yeah. That's why it's coming. Because God is not pleased. And he's going to make everybody get, you know, we, we're getting the government we deserve as a people. You know, when I was a little kid in the early 60s, we actually had prayer and Bible reading in elementary school. I think it was like first grade. Uh, I don't remember if they took it out by the time I was in second or third. I don't remember when they took it out, but I remember we had it. Women wore long dresses. They wore scarves on their head as a sign of respect men were women women were women there was no abortion there was no lb you know and uh gt rights uh there was no same marriage with the same uh you know the men with men women with women uh none of that I'm being cautious with the, the word police here on tube. None of that was, you know, none of that was going on. Matter of fact, in a lot of uh, states, uh, they had laws against uh, certain practices with men with men engaging in uh, activities of a Sexual nature, if you catch my drift, you could actually go to jail for that. Yeah. So, we were, seemed like we were a lot closer to the Lord back then. But guess what? Along comes Billy Goat Graham. Yeah. And television. That was the beginning of the downfall of this country. And then towards the late 60s, uh, free love and uh, the pill and, uh, yeah, drugs. 
the hippie movement, riots. We had racial riots. Yeah. Guess who founded the NAACP? <laughs> take a look. Pause right here and take a look at the founders of the NAACP. You'll see a lot of light-colored faces. Yeah. So, verse 5. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You think Pilate didn't hear about all the miracles that Jesus did? I mean, I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm, I'm positive he did. I mean, you know, you got spies following Jesus around, seeing, hey, who is this guy? Oh, he's all right, Pilate. He, he told everybody to pay ta their taxes. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, you know. Matter of fact, uh, I did a, a video on the, uh, the letter of Pontius Pilate to uh, Caesar, the Roman, yeah. I mean, it wasn't my... I just read the words from the letter of Pontius Pilate. But you know what? I read it and it makes it it seems all it nothing in it uh, contradicts scripture that I can tell. Nothing. So is it authentic? I don't know. Was it given under inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Eh, probably not, but Pilate uh, wrote a very interesting letter to uh, Rome supposedly. Is it true? I don't know. But I did a video on it, if you're interested. We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Remember, there's sin, and then there's a greater sin, which I believe is abominations. The Bible records like six or seven abominations, witchcraft being one of them. Um, and uh, men with men is another one. But um, remember the previous study? Uh, Jesus said... Uh, those that devoured widows' houses would receive the greater damnation. I guess if you do a greater sin, you get a greater damnation. What do you say? What do you say? John 19, 12. Never read in church. You'll never hear this, you never hear this taught in a church. Well, 99.9% .9 of the churches. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Him who? Jesus. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But everywhere you go, you always hear, oh, it was Rome. It was Rome. Rome did the dirty deed. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Yeah, you let this guy go, we're going to tell Caesar that you're letting this guy go. He's claiming to be a king. And it's 
telling everybody don't pay their taxes and you know let's rebel against rome Pilate knew Pilate knew what they were up to you know in matthew 27 18 for he Pilate, knew that for envy they had delivered him you know they they had delivered jesus mark 15 10 for he Pilate, for he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy they were envious of jesus he was healing the sick raising the dead yeah If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. You let this guy go, and we're going to bring charges of treason against you, Pilate. Pilate's, but you know, Pilate don't want to kill Christ. But he's now between a rock and a hard place. And an avalanche is coming. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place called that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Hmm. The, the pavement. You see, and it says, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Why would it say that? Because the New Testament was not written in Hebrew. That's why the Hebrews that are reading this would know what Gabbatha means. You know, if if the New Testament was written in Hebrew and then translated into Greek, it would say into a place called Gabbatha, but in the Greek, the pavement. But it doesn't say that. It says the opposite. Because the New Testament was written in Greek. And that's why it says, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And that happens a few times. Just like uh, Armageddon. In Revelation, you know, that tells you what some certain words, important words are in, in, in Hebrew because it was originally in Greek. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. I'm sure they said that in a very mocking manner. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. That's right. You don't have God the Father as your king. You didn't want God the Father as your king in, I think it was the book of Samuel. And you don't want God the Father to be your king now. Then he uh, then delivered he the, him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Here we go again. In the Greek, it's called the place of the skull. But in the Hebrew, Golgotha, letting you know what it's called in Hebrew because... It was not originally in Hebrew. Where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. What city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Now, remember something. Pilate was the Roman governor of Jerusalem. All right. Uh, I want to show you something in Revelation chapter 11. And then we're going to go back to John and close out close this out revelation chapter 11 verse 1 and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of god and the altar and them that worship therein but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not 
For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. You know who I think these are? Uh, I think they're the Revelation uh, chapter 2. And uh, you should read the, the verse number 9. I think that's the crowd of the Gentiles. That's my interpretation. You know, but they'll, you know, those that went to Bible cemeteries, Bible college, will tell you otherwise. Uh, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city, the holy city, what's the holy city? Jerusalem. Shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, about three and a half years. Uh, that is the true tribulation. 40, to, 40 and 2 months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And one of those two witnesses is going to be Elijah, for sure. I did a study on Elijah, where I can prove, I prove that absolutely true. Who's the second witness? Some people say Moses, because of the transfiguration. Uh, others say it's Enoch. I don't know. I kind of tend toward Enoch, but can I prove it from Scripture? No, I can't. But that's that would be my guess. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So that's a thousand two hundred and sixty days. Guess what? That roughly corresponds to three and a half years or forty two months. Verse 4, these are the two olive trees. Previous study, the olive tree was the symbol of Israel. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Uh, the Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. That's why John the Baptist proclaimed the coming of Christ. Yeah. Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Uh, do they open their mouth and have a flamethrower come out? No. No. This is a figure of speech, just like when uh, Elijah was... Uh, resting and Ahab soldiers came to arrest him. And uh, they said, Man of God, come down. Come with us. I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus and uh, Elijah said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from the sky and devour thee and thy fifty. And fire came down from the sky and burned up fifty guys and the captain, fifty-one. Yeah. Hour and 40 minute study on Elijah. Very relevant to the end times. Very relevant. Very, very relevant. I've spent a lot of time doing this, people. And, I, and you don't see me begging for money. You know? That's not why I do things. And if any man will hurt them, the two witnesses, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So if they try to shoot them with a gun, they're going to, who knows, maybe the gun will explode in their arms and the bullet goes into their brain. I don't know. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Guess what? Just like Elijah did. Elijah prayed that it would not rain in Israel, and there was drought. And let me tell you something. You don't have any rain for a couple of years. Everything dies. You don't grow nothing. And when you can't grow nothing, people can't eat. And when they can't eat, they go hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm being sarcastic. And uh, famine. Famine of bread. Famine of hearing the words of God. That's an Amos, by the way. And I did a Bible study on Amos, too. The Minor Prophet. 
These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood. Guess what? That's in uh, just like the uh, plagues of Revelation. Matter of fact, I did a playlist on the plagues of Revelation, how it mimics the end time plagues in the book of Revelation. Remember when Moses turned the water, well, Moses, the servant of the Lord, via the Lord's power, turned the water into blood. Yeah. Just like the end times. You want to know the future? Look to the past in the Bible. Every single time. Almost. Almost. And these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And I'm sure the remnant church is not going to have problems getting water or food because the Lord will, if he doesn't send the raven with meat to feed them, they'll have manna from heaven. Verse 7. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Ah, here's the, uh, here's the punchline. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Yeah, and they'll tell you, oh, that's Rome. That's Rome. Oh, your, uh, when, they, when they say that to you, ask them, oh, your Lord was crucified in Rome? What's his name? Oh, Jesus, of course. No, 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 no. It's not Jesus. You got, you got another... Lord, because, no, wrong one. So the two witnesses and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. The Bible never talks nice about Egypt that I have been able to find. Spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Lord Jesus crucified? Jerusalem! And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. Hey, it's Christmas time. Let's send each other gifts. And shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Just like Elijah went up to heaven in a cloud. Just like Jesus went up to heaven in a cloud. Read Acts chapter, I think it's chapter 3. I'm not sure. But it's in the first two or three chapters of the book of Acts. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. And the remnant were affrightened. Oh yeah. And gave glory to the God of heaven. There seems like there's going to be a remnant of people that get, uh, you know, figure out, hey, uh, we've been on the wrong side here. We, we, we thought we were serving God by killing God's servants. So, let's go back to John. And Pilate, verse 19... John 19, 19, 19, 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, Jerusalem, not Rome. 
And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. You know, in the Hebrew, they were Pilate was mocking them. Greek was the common language of business and commerce because they it, it had been conquered by the Greeks for I don't know, I think hundreds of years, I forget exactly how long. But Rome was a fairly newcomer. You know, they they took the area from the 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 Rome uh, the Romans took it from the Greeks. And what language do you think uh, Jesus and Pilate were speaking to each other? You listen to the Hebrew roots people, you'd think, oh, Pilate is fluent in Hebrew. I don't think so. And it doesn't say he had an interpreter. Personally, I think Jesus was talking to Pilate in Greek. I think they were talking to each other in Greek. Can I prove it from the Bible? No, that's just thus saith Bob. But, you know, what does Bob know? Then said the chief priest to the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate, don't, don't write that on the thing that Jesus says he's king of the Jews. We don't like that. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, you know, let's not tear it apart, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my garment among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldier did. Now there stood before the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, this is John, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. So evidently, Joseph is not around. Uh, maybe he's dead. I don't know. But John took Mary and took care of her. Oh, and by the way, John's the only uh, apostle that didn't die of a... Uh, it wasn't killed for his faith. He wrote the book of Revelation. He's the only one that died of old age. I, I, I thought that was interesting. According to history, well, legend, uh, they tried to kill him and they couldn't do it. So they just said, all right, well, we're tired of you preaching Jesus. So we're going to ship you off to the island of Patmos where he wrote the book. Uh, well, he, he uh, told his scribe, the copyist, to pen down write down the book of Revelation. Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be filled, saith, I thirst. All right, 29. Now there was a set of vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. How do you get vinegar? Well, one way is you take grape juice, which is signifying the blood of Christ, I suppose, and you put yeast in it, you know, like leavening, and it turns into wine. Well, then when the bacteria gets to it, it spoils the wine and it turns to vinegar. So, there's got to be some kind of spiritual application there. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm not exactly sure I'm qualified to explain it properly. But the, uh, the wine had spoiled into vinegar. 
and they took it and put it to his mouth. You know, he's thirsty. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Yeah, they had just lied and killed an innocent man, murder, but they're, uh, they're all worried about, you know, uh, we don't want the bodies remaining on the Sabbath day. Yeah. Yeah, you all got the law, but you don't keep it. Verse 32, Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. Uh, let's see. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out blood and water. And uh, they got a thing called the swoon theory. Uh, Jesus had just been beaten to a pulp and crucified and had his spear stuck in his side. And they claim, well, he just appeared to be dead, but he really wasn't. And then they stuck him in the tomb for three days and he recovered. And then he walked out and he's like, oh, I'm resurrected from the dead, according to the disciples. You know, this is the kind of nonsense that the uh, you-know-who spread. Yeah, I don't think so. And you better believe a Roman soldier who had been in battle and had a spear and pierced his side just didn't do like a little pinprick in his side. And when you, when you get, when, when somebody dies... The blood and the water separate because the heart pumping it through your system keeps it mixed up. Your body is like 90-something percent water. So it keeps the blood and the water, the platelets, the red blood cells and what have you, uh, uh, mixed up. But when you die, they separate. The heavy particles will go to the bottom and the water will float on top. And that's why it tells you there came out blood and water. Any soldier would know that he was dead when you see thick blood come out and then, uh, you know, light colored water. You would know his heart quit pumping and they pierced his side. They knew he was dead. A soldier that had been in war, not knowing somebody's when they're alive or dead? You think they just stuck the spear in his side like half an inch? No. You would push it in until you saw the 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 top, the the head of the shaft, uh you know, I don't know how long the uh spear point was, but I'll guarantee you when you see that thing disappear into the person's body, you know full well it's in there. Yeah, and they want you to think that uh, Jesus really didn't rise from the dead. He's just playing. He's just playing possum, and he's going to get a couple days of rest, and he's just going to get up and walk around like nothing happened. Yeah, that's the kind of nonsense you hear. Uh, yeah, never mind. Verse thirty-five, and he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And that was, I think, in Isaiah. And another, and again, another scripture saith, they shall look upon him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the you-know-whos, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. 
And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. So here it is. You got Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus uh, working together to bury the body of Jesus. Verse 40. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new sepulcher, which was never man yet lain. There, there laid they Jesus because, uh, therefore, because of the Jews preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. So there you go. And this is the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.